Hi everyone, my name is Deborah Stein. I'm a professor at the practice in engineering and public policy and associate director for policy outreach at the Scott Institute for Energy Innovation at Carnegie Mellon University. Welcome to this lecture answering the question, what is non-market analysis for new technology commercialization? In this lecture, we'll explore why non-market analysis and strategy development is important, identify the key elements of a non-market analysis, and discuss the differences between a market and non-market analysis. You've probably heard of Google's self-driving car. Here's a picture of Carnegie Mellon's car. At this point, we know self-driving cars work from an engineering standpoint, but some challenges remain for massive use of these cars. We also suspect there's a market for these cars at some point in the future. In addition, self-driving cars are expected by some analysts to reduce traffic accidents and energy consumption and thus air pollution, resulting in less harm to the public. So we're at an early, though positive stage for this technology in terms of potential use by the broader public. But what impact will public policies and public opinion have on these cars reaching their full potential in the marketplace? This is where a non-market strategy is important. It's not enough to know whether technology works or its potential market. We also need to understand the opportunities and challenges public policies and public opinion pose for new technology commercialization. This graphic illustrates the challenges posed to widespread commercialization for automated driving. This analysis, prepared and regularly updated by Stanford Law, shows in blue the states that allow automated driving, including California and Florida. Yellow shows states that are considering allowing automated cars on the road, such as Texas and New York. And red shows that states that discussed and then failed to approve allowing self-driving cars on the road, including Arizona and Oklahoma. Since driving laws vary by state, this poses a major challenge to this industry. Responding to that challenge requires development of a non-market strategy. Actions that can be taken by firms interested in these technologies so that technology can reach its full potential in the marketplace. And here you see the battle beginning as illustrated in these headlines from NBC News and the MIT Technology Review. The administrator of the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, known as NHTSA, indicated in a speech to an automated vehicle symposium that his agency wants to support the industry but that human safety and privacy cannot be compromised. Google then defends self-driving cars' safety record by saying that their cars are safer than those driven by humans. And in the end, the product will be influenced by public opinion. My 16-year-old daughter just finished driver's education and is in the process of learning to drive. But she's ready to be on the road, on her own, on an icy road in Pittsburgh, which do I think will be safer? Her driving the car on her own or in a self-driving car? Each person will have their own perception of which action is riskier. However, public policies can pose opportunities as well. Here's a picture of another Carnegie Mellon innovation, an aqueous hybrid ion battery, more informally, a saltwater battery. Energy storage systems such as these are needed in order for us to move toward renewable energy. We need to store energy from wind and solar power, for example, when the sun does not shine or the wind does not blow. These batteries can be used for homes, microgrids, and by utilities for energy management. The commercialization of these new technologies such as these has been supported by state policies as illustrated in this New York Times article. A mandate in California and other states as well as federal and state policies that support rooftop solar systems along with market forces have led this technology to advance in the marketplace and reach its potential. That is not to say there are not still regulatory challenges, however, to energy storage. This report from the Interstate Renewable Energy Council, IREC, illustrates the policies that still need to be changed, including those related to markets and market signals, standards, eligibility rules, and governmental oversight coordination. The bottom line is that all new technologies need at the early stages to consider non-market influences on their product. As engineers innovate new technologies, they tend to focus on two key aspects. Will it work? And what is its market and business case? Yet, there is a third aspect that is often missing in their deliberations. What impact will public policy have on my technology reaching its full potential in the marketplace? Understanding these opportunities and challenges and their impact on engineering and business plans can be key factors in the success of commercializing a new technology. 
So firms, engineers, and others involved with the new technology need to analyze the perspective of policymakers in society. Fundamentally, is society ready to accept the technology? And if not, what actions might be taken to improve that acceptance? That is the purpose of a non-market strategy development. As with all analysis methods, there are different ways to approach non-market strategy development. The most well-known scholar is David Barron. In his text, Business and the Environment, he recommends analyzing the four I's, issues, interest, institutions, and information. Issues are the basic unit of analysis and the focus of a firm's non-market action. For example, in the case of the self-driving car, it might be driver safety. Interest are the individuals and groups with preferences about or a stake in the issue. In the self-driving car example, it might be non-governmental organizations focused on automobile safety, such as the Insurance Institute for Highway Safety. Institutions are the arenas in which interests seek to influence the outcome of, on issues. They can be government agencies, such as the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, but it also might be standards organizations and others that can influence the eligibility of a product for the marketplace. Information is what the interest and institutional office holders know or believe about the issues and the forces affecting their development. In this case, the media play a major role in influencing what policymakers know about a situation, and more in-depth reports from think tanks like the National Research Council's Transportation Research Board can also play a key role. A similar model that builds upon David Barron's four eyes is illustrated in this figure from David Bach and David Bruce Allen from MIT's Sloan Business School Review. This keeps the four eyes, issues, interests, and information, renames institutions that as arenas, and adds into the analysis the identification of the key actors and the assets the actors need to prevail in the arena. Actors can include opinion leaders, interest groups, governments, the public, media, think tanks, standards organizations, and others who are interested in and can influence the commercialization of a new product. In an analysis, you would want to identify all these organizations and understand their position as well as the degree of influence based on the assets that they have. This can be done through a Pence analysis, which will be discussed in a later video. There are many actions firms can take. They can try to influence government either by directly talking or negotiating with policymakers, known as majority building strategies, targeting information analyses to issues that policymakers care about, say job creation, or representation strategies targeting the voters in a, pol in a policymaker's district to encourage them to influence the legislator for the firm. Firms can interact with policymaker and the pol public through traditional social media, participate with other firms and trade associations that share similar views or go back to the design board and think about how they might change the design of their product to make it more acceptable. For example, a firm in Texas installed radar to detect birds on their offshore wind farms so that the wind turbines stop when a flock of birds are detected. Keep in mind that organizations opposing a product will take similar action in the same arenas. To decide which actions make the most sense for a firm requires policy analysis, which is discussed in another video. So why is understanding of non-market factors important? First, it promotes confidence in your capabilities as it shows you have a realistic understanding of the challenges and opportunities of non-market factors for a new technology that you are promoting. Second, non-market factors influence a firm's existing or potential profitability and thus your strategy to respond to them will influence the willingness of a venture for capital firm, angel, or government agency to invest in a product you care about. Finally, it is important to care about what your competition is doing. If your competitor is active in the public policy arena and you are not, they may be able to influence the outcome so that their product is benefited while your product is not. For example, by requiring a safety device they've already developed and included in their engineering designs while you have not. So understanding non-market factors and developing a strategy to respond to them is important for new technology commercialization whether it is the one in which you're involved, or one that you support for other goals, such as in the case of energy storage and renewable energy. In summary, for a product to be successful in the marketplace requires more than knowing if it works or its potential market. We also need to understand key policies that present opportunities or challenges for that new technology and develop a non-market strategy to respond. While a market strategy focuses on the interaction between firms, 
say whether one, is, one car is better than another due to a particular feature, a non-market strategy focuses on social, political, and legal arrangements outside the marketplace, such as regulation or non-governmental organization opposition. So when developing a non-market strategy, we want to look at least at the four I's. The issues that are a concern to policymakers and the public, the interests that have a stake in the issue, the governmental and non-governmental institutions, including media and the public, that influence the outcome, and information as to the degree to which the issue is or is not a concern. By developing a non-market strategy, a new technology has a greater chance of reaching its full potential in the marketplace. Thank you for watching, and I encourage you to watch the other videos in this series.